Let us conclude our reading of Jeremiah, beginning in chapter 50. The word of the Lord spoken, spoke concerning Babylon, concerning the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare among the nations and proclaim, set up a banner and proclaim, conceal it not and say, Babylon is taken, Bel is put to shame, Merodach is dismayed. Her images are put to shame, her idols are dismayed. For out of the north a nation has come up against her, which shall make her land a desolation, and none shall dwell in it. Both man and beast shall flee away. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, the people of Israel and the people of Judah shall come together, weeping as they come, and they shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, with faces turned toward it, saying, Come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant that will never be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. All who found them have devoured them, and their enemies have said, We are not guilty, for they have sinned against the Lord, their habitation of righteousness, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Flee from the midst of Babylon, and go out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as male goats before the flock. For behold, I am stirring up and bringing against Babylon a gathering of great nations from the north country, and they shall array themselves against her. From there she shall be taken. Their arrows are like a skilled warrior who does not return empty-handed. Chaldea shall be plundered. All who plunder her shall be sated, declares the Lord. Though you rejoice, though you exult, O plunderers of my heritage, though you frolic like a heifer in the pasture and neigh like stallions, your mother shall be utterly shamed and she who bore you shall be disgraced. Behold, she shall be the last of the nations, a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, she shall not be inhabited, but shall be in utter desolation. Everyone who passes by Babylon shall be appalled, and hiss because of all her wounds. Set yourselves in array against Babylon all around, all you who bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Raise a shout against her all around. She has surrendered. Her bulwarks have fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For this is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done. Cut off from Babylon the sower, and the one who handles the sickle in the times of harvest. Because of the sword of the oppressor, everyone shall turn to his own people, and everyone shall flee to his own land. Israel is a hunted sheep driven away by lions. First the king of Assyria devoured him, and now at last Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has gnawed his bones. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I am bringing punishment on the king of Babylon and his land, as I punished the king of Assyria. I will restore Israel to, the, to his pasture, and he shall feed on Carmel and, Bashan, and in Bashan. And his desires shall be satisfied on the hills of Ephraim and in Gilead. In those days and in that time, declares the Lord, iniquity shall be sought in Israel, and there shall be none. 
and sin in Judah, and none shall be found. For I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Go up against the land of Marathim, and against the inhabitants of Pekod. Kill and devote them to destruction, declares the Lord, and do all that I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth is cut down and broken. How Babylon has become a horror among the nations. I set a snare for you, and you were taken, O Babylon, and you did not know it. You were found and caught because you opposed the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and brought out the weapons of his wrath. For the Lord God of hosts has a work to do in the land of the Chaldeans. Come against her from every quarter. Open her granaries. Pile her up like heaps of grain and devote her to destruction. Let nothing be left of her. Kill all her bulls. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment. A voice. They flee and escape from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, vengeance for his temple. Summon archers against Babylon, all those who bend the bow. Encamp around her, let no one escape. Repay her according to her deeds. Do to her according to all that she has done. For she has proudly defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. Therefore her young men shall fall in her squares, and all her soldiers shall be destroyed on that day, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O proud one, declares the Lord God of hosts, for your day has come. The time when I will punish you, the proud one shall stumble and fall, with none to raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it will devour all that is around him. Thus says the Lord of hosts, The people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah with them. All who took them captive have held them fast. They refuse to let them go. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will surely plead their cause, that he may give rest to the earth, but unrest to the inhabitants of Babylon. A sword against the Chaldeans, declares the Lord, and against the inhabitants of Babylon, and against her officials and her wise men. A sword against the diviners, that they may become fools. A sword against her warriors, that they may be destroyed. A sword against her horses and against her chariots, and against all the foreign troops in her midst, that they may become women. A sword against all her treasures, that they may be plundered. A drought against her waters, that they may be dried up. For it is a land of images, and they are mad over idols. Therefore wild beasts shall dwell with hyenas in Babylon, and ostriches shall dwell in her. She shall never again have people, nor be inhabited for all generations. It would be interesting, if you haven't done so already, to look into historical Babylon today, to look at the ruins. Ch chapter 50, verse 39 says, Therefore wild beasts shall dwell with hyenas in Babylon. That's pretty much all you've got in Babylon today. Continuing in verse 40. As when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring cities, declared the Lord, so no man shall dwell there, and no son of man shall sojourn in her. Behold, a people comes from the north, 
A mighty nation and many kings are stirring from the farthest parts of the earth. They lay hold of bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy. The sound of them is like the roaring of the sea. They ride on horses, arrayed as a man in battle against you, O daughter of Babylon. The king of Babylon heard the report of them, and his hands fell helpless. Anguish seized him, pain as of a woman in labor. There's that term again. Behold, like a lion coming up from the thicket of the Jordan against a perennial pasture, I will suddenly make them run away from her, and I will appoint over her whomever I choose. For who is like me? Who will summon me? What shepherd can stand before me? Therefore hear the plan that the Lord has made against Babylon, and the purposes that he has formed against the land of the Chaldeans. Surely the little ones of their flock shall be dragged away. Surely their fold shall be appalled at their fate. At the sound of the capture of Babylon, the earth shall tremble, and her cry shall be heard among the nations. Chapter 51 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will stir up the spirit of a destroyer against Babylon, against the inhabitants of leb Kamai, And I will send to Babylon winnowers, and they shall winnow her, and they shall empty her land, when they come against her from every side on the day of trouble. Let not the archer bend his bow, and let him not stand up in his armor. Spare not her young men. Devote to destruction all her army. They shall fall down slain in the land of the Chaldeans and wounded in her streets. For Israel and Judah have not been forsaken by their God, the Lord of hosts, but the land of the Chaldeans is full of guilt against the Holy One of Israel. Flee from the midst of Babylon. Let everyone save his life. Be not cut off in her punishment, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. The repayment he is rendering her. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand, making all the earth drunken. The nations drank of her wine, therefore the nations went mad. Suddenly Babylon has fallen and been broken. Wail for her. Take balm for her pain. Perhaps she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she was not healed. Forsake her, and let us go each to his own country, for her judgment has reached up to heaven and has been lifted up even to the skies. The Lord has brought about our vindication. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Sharpen the arrows, take up the shields. The Lord has stirred up the spirit of the kings of the Medes because his purpose concerning Babylon is to destroy it. For that is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance for his temple. Set up a standard against the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord has both planned and done what he has spoken concerning the inhabitants of Babylon. O you who dwell by many waters, rich in treasures, your end has come. The thread of your life is cut. The Lord of hosts has sworn by himself. Surely I will fill you with men, as many as locusts, and they shall raise the shout of victory over you. It is he who made the earth by his power, who established the world by his wisdom, and by his understanding stretched out the heavens. 
When he utters his voice, there is a tumult of waters in the heavens, and he makes the mist rise from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, and he brings forth the wind from his storehouses. Every man is stupid and without knowledge. Every goldsmith is put to shame by his idols, for his images are false, and there is no breath in them. They are worthless, a work of delusion. At the time of their punishment they shall perish. Not like these is he who is the portion of Jacob, for he is the one who formed all things. And Israel is the tribe of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. You are my hammer and weapon of war. With you I break nations in pieces. With you I destroy kingdoms. With you I break in pieces the horse and his rider. With you I break in pieces the chariot and the charioteer. With you I break in pieces man and woman. With you I break in pieces the old man and the youth. With you I break in pieces the young man and the young woman. With you I break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. With you I break in pieces the farmer and his team. With you I break in pieces governors and commanders. I will repay Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea before your very eyes for all the evil that they have done in Zion, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O destroying mountain, declares the Lord, which destroys the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the crags and make you a burnt mountain. No stone shall be taken from, from you for a corner and no stone for a foundation, but you shall be a perpetual waste, declares the Lord. There it is again, a perpetual waste. Like I said, if you have not looked into historical Babylon today, take a good look. It's a good description. Set up a standard on the earth, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations for war against her, summon against her the kingdoms, Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Appoint a marshal against her, bring up horses like bristling locusts, prepare the nations for war against her, the king of the Medes with their governors and deputies, and every land under their dominion. The land trembles and writhes in pain, for the Lord's purpose against Babylon stand, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. The warriors of Babylon have ceased fighting. They remain in their strongholds. Their strength has failed. They have become women. Her dwellings are on fire. Her bars are broken. One runner runs to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to tell the king of Babylon that his city is taken on every side. The fords have been seized. The marshes are burned with fire, and the soldiers are in panic. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor at the time when it is trodden. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest will come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. He has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me like a monster. He has filled his stomach with my delicacies. He has rinsed me out. The violence done to me and my, to my kinsmen be upon Babylon. Let the inhabitant of Zion say, My blood be upon the inhabitants of Chaldea. Let Jerusalem say, Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will plead your cause and take vengeance for you. I will draw up her sea and make her fountain dry. 
And Babylon shall become a heap of ruins, a haunt of jackals, a horror and a hissing without inhabitant. They shall roar together like lions. They shall growl like lion's cubs. While they are inflamed, I will prepare them a feast and make them drunk that they may become merry, then sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the Lord. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams and male goats. How Babylon is taken, the praise of the whole earth seized. How Babylon has become a horror among the nations. The sea has come upon Babylon. She is covered with tumultuous waves. Her cities have become a horror, a land of drought and desert, and a desert, a land in which no one dwells, and through which no son of man passes. And I will punish Bel in Babylon, and take out of his mouth what he has swallowed. The nation shall no longer flow to him, the wall of Babylon has fallen. Go out from the midst of her, my people. Let everyone save his life from the fierce anger of the Lord. Let not your heart faint and be not fearful at the report heard in the land. When a report comes in one year and afterward a report in another year, and violence is in the land, and ruler is against ruler. Therefore, behold, the days are coming when I will punish the images of Babylon. Her whole land shall be put, in, put to shame, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heavens and the earth, and all that is in them, shall sing for joy over Babylon. For the destroyer shall come against them out of the north, declares the Lord. Babylon must fall for the slain of Israel, just as for Babylon have fallen the slain of all the earth. You who have escaped from the sword, go, do not stand still. Remember the Lord from far away, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. We are put to shame, for we have heard reproach. Dishonor has covered our face. The for foreigners have come into the holy places of the Lord's house. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will execute judgment upon her images, and through all her land the wounded shall groan. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, and though she should fortify her strong height, yet destroyers would come from me against her, declares the Lord. A voice, a cry from Babylon, the noise of great destruction from the land of the Chaldeans. For the Lord is laying Babylon waste and still her mighty voice, instilling her mighty voice. Their waves roar like many waters. The noise of their voice is raised. For a destroyer has come upon her, upon Babylon. Her warriors are taken. Their bows are broken in pieces. For the Lord is a God of recompense. He will surely repay. I will make drunk her officials and her wise men, her governors, her commanders, and her warriors. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep and not wake, declares the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the broad wall of Babylon shall be leveled to the ground, and her high gate shall be burned with fire. The peoples labor for nothing, and the nations worry themselves only for fire. The word that Jeremiah the prophet commanded Sarai, the son of Neriah, son of Mehesiah, when he went with Zedekiah, king of Judah, to Babylon, 
In the fourth year of his reign, Saraiah was the quartermaster. Jeremiah wrote in a book all the disaster that should come upon Babylon, all these words that are written concerning Babylon. And Jeremiah said to Saraiah, When you come to Babylon, see that you read all these words, and say, O Lord, you have said concerning this place that you will cut it off, so that nothing shall dwell in it, neither man nor beast, and it shall be desolate forever. When you finish reading this book, tie a stone to it and cast it into the midst of the Euphrates, and say, Thus shall Babylon sink to rise no more because of the disaster that I am bringing upon her, and they shall become exhausted. Thus far are the words of Jeremiah. Chapter 52 Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For because of the anger of the Lord, it came to the point in Jerusalem and Judah that he cast them out from his presence. And Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine was so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled and went out from the city by night by the way of a gate between the two walls, by the king's garden. And the Chaldeans were around the city, and they went in the direction of Adaba. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And all his army was scattered from him. Then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah in the land of Hamath. And he passed sentence on him. The king of Babylon slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and also slaughtered all the officials of Judah at Riblah. He put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains and the king of Babylon took him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. That is a tough sentence. Slaughtered all of his sons and his officials in front of his very eyes. And then he cast out his eyes, took his eyes out and kept him alive, put him in chains and imprisoned him to think upon all he had done. What a terrible punishment. Continuing in verse 12. In the fifth month, on that tenth day of the month, that was the nineteenth year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuzaradan, the captain of the bodyguard, who served the king of Babylon, entered Jerusalem. And he burned the house of the Lord, and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down. And all the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down all the walls around Jerusalem. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive some of the poorest of the people, and the rest of the people who were left in the city, and the deserters who had deserted to the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the artisans. 
But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. And the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke in pieces and carried all the bronze to Babylon. And they took away the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the basins and the dishes for incense and all the vessels of bronze used in the temple service. Also the small bowls and the fire pans and the basins and the pots and the lampstands and the dishes for incense and the bowls for drink offerings. What was of gold the captain of the guard took away as gold and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, the one sea, the twelve bronze bulls that were under the sea, and the stands which Solomon the king had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all these things was beyond weight. As for the pillars, the height of the one pillar was eighteen cubits. Its circumference was twelve cubits and its thickness was four fingers, and it was hollow. On it was a capital of bronze. The height of the one capital was five cubits, a network and pomegranates, all of bronze, were around the capital. And the second pillar had the same, with pomegranates. There were ninety-six pomegranates on the sides, all the pomegranates were a hundred upon the network all around. And the captain of the guard took Sedei, the chief priest, and Zephaniah, the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war, and seven men of the king's council who were found in the city, and the secretary of the commander of the army, who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land, who were found in the midst of the city. And Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah in the land of Hamath. So Judah was taken into exile out of its land. This is the number of the people who Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,023 Judeans. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captives from Jerusalem, 832 persons. In the twenty-third year of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Judeans, 745 persons. All the persons were 4,600. And in the 37th year of the exile of Jehoiachin, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 25th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, graciously freed Jehoiachin, king of Judah, and brought him out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him, and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. And for his allowance, a regular allowance was given him by the king, according to his daily needs, until the day of his death as long as he lived. A very interesting, I love this last chapter in Jeremiah, it really gives you an overview of the book quite well. God's Word is so beautiful and so precise. We have precise numbers, we have precise dates. We have names from history. We have cities and regions and 
towns, and peoples, people's names. And it's all verifiable through our history. Our history is quite important, although there are many among us today that regard it not. It breaks my heart to see people treat our history the way they do. Not just our ancient history, but our recent history. As nations, we get the leaders we deserve. We are fallen people. We do not consider the Lord's wisdom or His ways valuable. And we as societies are paying a very stiff price. It breaks my heart to see what is going on in the Western world these days. We were told to expect wars and rumors of wars. And we've had plenty of those. Pestilence, disease, famine, droughts, increases in earthquakes, increases in volcanoes, increases in severe weather. And it's all coming to pass. God pronounced judgments in the past that we have not learned from. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Joel, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Malachi, Ezra, Moses, all wise people, <coughs> wise in the ways of the Lord, used of God in mighty ways. Even with all the modern science that we have come to know, all the modern science, the modern wisdom of man, points to a creator. Even the most staunch scientists admit this couldn't have all happened by accident. Look at DNA itself, a modern science. We can see the building blocks of life, the tools of God Himself. We look into the cosmos, we can see the Creator. We can see Him clearly. You don't have to reject science as a Christian. I see many doing so, and I think it's to their discredit. God doesn't tell us to reject science. The book of Isaiah began in the first chapter, I think around the 8th or 18th verse, one of the two, I can't recall. But Come, let us reason together. If you reason from the scriptures and from science, together taking in all the evidence, no matter where it comes from, you can sift pretty quickly the truth. Now, science has become a dirty word to a lot of Christians, especially with what's happened over the last four or five years. Science has never settled. The greats never considered science settled. Anybody who's ever taken a seventh grade biology class or a science class knows science is not settled unless you've taken it in the last 20, 25 years. I recall science, I recall 
geology, if I recall, astronomy. I had good teachers. I received a classical education because of my age. I was blessed. I was probably one of the last in the public education to receive a classical education. I read the greats. I have read many things. It took me a while, but it led me to God. It led me to a Creator, a knowledge of our Creator. I'm probably going to lose a few people right here, but I'm going to say that flat earth is something that's you can glean it from Scripture, but you can't prove it. I see all the videos. I see all the things. It breaks my heart. Something as simple as the stars in the sky can prove the truth. I see Christians rejecting other Christians. I see Christians rejecting science. I see so many people falling by the wayside. God's handiwork is in the heavens as well as it is here on the ground. The firmaments, yes. The sky, yes. There's much to debate. There's much that has been hidden from us, especially over the last 7,500 years. Satan has had a head start on us, people. He's been at it for a long time. There are others that hold to one book above all others. One version of one book above all others. I have King James Version Bible, an old one, that I use often when I'm researching words, especially out of Strong's Concordance. There are many things you can glean from Scripture. Most true wisdom comes from Scripture. And even the science comes back to Scripture. But it takes discernment and wisdom. We are told in books like Daniel that we're going to have greater wisdom in the latter days. We have greater wisdom. We choose not, some of us choose not to consider it. And I think that's to our detriment. It would do us well to consider what is truth, what is folly. I'm going to leave you with that. In our next video, we are going to get to 1 John. And I'll decide at that point where we go. But I believe we're going to come back to the Old Testament for a while. God bless you. And thank you for hearing God's Word.